When I was younger, we warned the kids about weed as a gateway drug. I believe that marijuana is a gateway drug that causes our children and adults to use other drugs. Everybody that has experience with it tells me that marijuana is a gateway drug. I, I, I think the feds should be um, attuned to the way that marijuana is still used as a gateway drug. Now I'm reading news that warns the kids against gateway ideas. Yiannopoulos serves as a gateway to more dangerous ideas. This according to the director of the Anti-Defamation League, quoted in a CNN story about how Milo Yiannopoulos is trying to convince college kids that hate speech is cool. As an avid viewer of Milo's tour stops, in my opinion, it's more accurate to say he's trying to convince college kids that free speech is cool, including provocative speech, with which you may disagree, but these days the definition of hate speech is speech with which you disagree. Over the last year, I've really enjoyed watching Milo's tour, both because I enjoy his talks, but also because his fiercest opponents or incidental bonus comedy. There was Triglypuff. There were the bloody self-painting feminists. There was Nicki Minaj and David Cross's mashup love child. I appreciate Milo's mind, but at least equally, I appreciate him as a herder of lol cows. However, if you take enough lol cows to slaughter, eventually they may revolt. And we are at that point. I think my ability to find humor in most things is pretty broad, and it's certainly easy to do in the context of your old-fashioned Milo protesters. But I'm at a loss for jokes when instead of protesting, these people are now turning violent and destroying property and assaulting people. Current reports are $100,000 in damage to property alone in Berkeley after Milo's tour stop there this week. This event in Berkeley and the punching of Richard Spencer at the inauguration and the overall rise in violence and destruction coming from the left have been an intellectual and philosophical litmus test for me as I observe the social media reactions of my friends. You often hear you don't judge your friendships by the good times. You judge your friendships by the bad times. Because anyone can handle the good times and the fun times. Only a person of character and integrity can manage conflict. Similarly, you don't measure your free speech commitment by speech with which you agree. You measure it by speech with which you don't, especially at an emotional level. You measure it by speech that you personally might have urges to shut down. For me, that's something like protesting military funerals, like Westboro Baptist has done. And for other people, that's a juvenile lecture from a Trump-worshipping British gay guy with a comically inflated ego. The point is, I'm committed to free speech, and I want everyone to have his or her say, from God hates fag signs to the dangerous faggot tour. When are those gonna collide? That would be awesome. That's a free speech apocalypse waiting to happen. Anyhow, in response to how serious the left's fascistic and violent reaction to the wrong ideas has become, I think it's incumbent upon me and incumbent upon us to inquire seriously about the philosophy that makes this type of brutality possible. And that's why I'm stuck on this gateway quote, which is at least part of the problem, this concept that certain ideas are gateways to other dangerous ideas. I've never heard this concept described in exactly these terms, but I have heard the reasoning before, and I think with increasing frequency. Don't talk about this concept, it might lead to that concept, and that concept is outside the scope of acceptable thought. After all, that concept is racist, or sexist, or homophobic, or xenophobic, or otherwise aptly described in buzzword ease. Now, of course, thought does work in a chain-like structure. One idea leads to another, and when we connect them, that's when we as humans are at our most powerful. So the question becomes, why should we fear that process? Is it reasonable to assume that process leads to bad outcomes. Free speech is a gateway to dangerous ideas, that's true, but it's an incomplete picture. Free speech is a gateway to all ideas, ranging from the very best to the very worst, but free speech is also the mechanism by which the best ideas are selected. So yes, bad ideas expressed through the voice of a charismatic speaker can have disastrous outcomes. I will grant your Godwinian example, but I contend that's an anecdote among the data of human history. Consider this. Is it coincidence that the countries that top the Human Freedom Index and the countries that top the Global Innovation Index 
have significant overlap. Why do you think it is that a freely functioning marketplace of ideas corresponds directly with innovation? Would it be better if these countries simply told their citizens the right ideas instead, rather than trusting them to think for themselves? Might the free flow of ideas have been worth the risk, maybe even necessary? to become a global innovation leader. Now I grant, many of these countries lack perfectly free speech, but the point I'm making is this. The freer the speech, the better the ideas that emerge. That's not theory, that's demonstrable. If keeping dangerous ideas under state control led to the emergence of good ideas, North Korea would be the global innovation capital. Instead, it is literally where the light bulbs turn off. So, progressives, think of the one human tool most responsible for progress. It's not the wheel, it's not the printing press, it's not even the internet through which I speak to you now. It's what gave rise to all those revolutionary tools. It's thought, articulated through speech. It's freely asking what if, and allowing the theoretical answers to flow without fear of the bad ones, because the good ones tend to be fiercely competitive. When people have the freedom to choose ideas, they tend to choose the best ones, and quality of life tends to increase. The reality is there's no such thing as discovery, innovation, progress, without risk. The philosophy of fear is as inappropriate in the context of speech as it is in the context of science or the context of history or anywhere else. Oh, Mayflower settlers don't sail through that gateway to America. There's danger there. Oh, Lewis and Clark don't tread through that gateway to the West. There's danger there. Oh, allied forces don't drop behind those German lines. There's danger there. What might today look like if the people of yesterday had left every gateway closed? What might a college campus look like with intellectual gateways closed? And what would be the purpose of such an institution at all? The philosophical hinge in this thought exercise rests on this fundamental question. When given choices, do you trust human beings to make good ones? Or do you not? And if you don't, if instead you think you should be the one to make those choices for them, I'll repeat a common question I've asked frequently over the last year. Who's the real fascist again? Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.